The title of the exhibit is Contingent Identities. The notion that we negotiate different ideas about who we are based on who we think we are as well as what society might consider us to be. The general body of the work are both paintings and drawings that touch on the human condition. The drawings are charcoal. The paintings I have worked with mixed media for quite a while. I rather like the idea of my work being one that maybe raises questions and doesn't necessarily give the answers. I work primarily with heads. I do occasionally use a little more of the figure in some to express a very particular idea. Most of my figures, most of my heads, are imagined, if you will. They're from visual memory. But I distort, I change, I create, I invent, if you will, a new kind of character. So these are all sort of characters that I have thought up to express something in particular. I have worked tremendously with this idea of the confrontational gaze. The point of view is important to me because at times such as with Profiled, the point of view is looking down. That places the viewer in a position of power. So power is an interplay constantly in both the use of the material as well as the situation of the gaze, the viewer and their position as they observe the work. I also play with the titles tremendously, Profiled itself, with a parenthesis on the D, having the double meaning of the profile and the profiling, allowing the viewer to bring their interpretations to meaning without necessarily stating what the answer should be. I rather like the idea of my work being one that maybe raises questions and doesn't necessarily give the answers. The flies have raised a lot of questions, yes. So it starts off with just a simple fascination with fly. In the fact that fly is a rather irritating, especially the house fly, irritating presence. When I started on them in the summer, it was maybe about two weeks after that that I watched Obama being interviewed in the White House and he had a problem of a house fly. The president of Iran was also shown struggling with a house fly during a press conference. And I thought to myself in very simple terms, doesn't matter who you are, where you are in society, the house fly is in a way a humbling factor. And I started to think about Kafka's metamorphosis, the power relationships as well as Wall Street and our changing position in the global society. The charcoal drawings that are observed looking down at figures in suits reference directly Wall Street and the, that humbling factor with the flies. There is disparate, which the figures are moving around aimlessly as if they're not sure where they're going, which is the adjustment that takes place in finding or locating, if you will, your new identity. And the flies themselves in that particular drawing are also more chaotic in their placement. Homogeneity plays directly with that concept of how identity can be homogenized. When you consider prejudices in themselves, it's that idea of sameness, where everybody seems to be same and we categorize them as such. Um, at that point, uh, when one observes a little bit closer, you start to find the most subtle of differences. And it's those subtle of differences that we sometimes go through in processes of recognizing diversity within the otherwise generalized notion of same. So I enjoy that interplay and I like to place the viewer in that position where they have to go through that process. In the large endemic painting, besides having the flies that are waiting to pounce as well, numerous figures holding paper. The paper representing what we consider as the official form of identity. Our presence, our sense of identity is just that, paper. So that's how important paper is to our sense of belonging, our sense of identity, and our sense of security. And that concept of sense of security is what I start to play up with with the blank sheets of paper that are being held tightly by these Wall Street guys who are searching for a new meaning of their identity. The burlap I uh, use as a metaphor of cultural meaning of place, being that I am from Zimbabwe. 
and we utilize that burlap as a utilitarian material growing up. I situate cultural meaning of place with the burlap and I situate cultural meaning of place with the oil. I also use polymer binder to bind the burlap onto the surface. Uh, that in itself is also a concept. I find, or rather I enjoy the play whereby the burlap is observed on my paintings while the plastic is transparent. And so I see that as a changing power relationship, uh, this new hybridity of a globalized society that we live in. My uh, introduction to the arts was primarily through my father, who has a Master's of Fine Arts as well, besides numerous other degrees. Um, but he applied his arts in a political cartoons. In fact, we got into trouble and my family was deported by the then Prime Minister of Rhodesia, Ian Smith, who did not like my father's criticism of a white regime, a uh, minority regime. So I grew up with that idea that art is a potential social changer, that it can maybe have a power of expression that gets people thinking about the world around them uh, and the condition that we are in. The time when I found my love for teaching, I mean, my art, my studio involvement is first and foremost, I did not really want to be a teacher. But as part of my graduate studies, I was given a teaching assistantship, meaning that they paid for my tuition and gave me a little salary, so I had to work for it. And so they gave me a class to teach. Um, and I was just thrown a class, I had to go in and start teaching. I got trapped, I got hooked, just like I got hooked with studio. And I found myself there and found that I really enjoyed it. Eye level is precisely the level of your eye. Think of it as the actual height of your eye from the ground. But I think what is important that I, I, I do try to impress or would like to be able to impress on my students is the importance of discovering self. And I think drawing the creative process in general is one that allows for that. Finding one's own voice and finding one's own place in that idea of the creative process. And so what gives me most joy is not only certainly a student's moment, aha moment, when they begin to discover a way of observing that, that helps them to understand better how to act on it, but more so importantly that they start to find a way to connect with who they are and what they can contribute, that in itself becomes originality. Not whether it's been done or not before, but the fact that it is their voice that is speaking through this visual language. Montgomery College offers, I think, students that opportunity to step into that place of theirs, that voice I was talking about earlier on. And that opportunity as an in open enrollment gives everybody that chance. And that mission, I think, is one that far exceeds my experiences in working with selective students. I also particularly enjoy the diversity, being from another part of the world, of students from all over the world. Students with all different interests rather than just a school of art and design. So I will have business majors in my classes, I will have nurses and so forth. I find that to be a much more enriching kind of dynamic growth, a potential in education that we learn from each other and how we apply our ideas are with that broad mind. Being a studio artist and then going to teach is in itself a reciprocal kind of relationship because I am sharing what I know, I'm sharing what I think the students might benefit from, but the students are sharing their engagement, their excitement, and that in itself rubs right back onto me. I go to the studio, I face a drawing I'm working on, and uh, I also hear my own voice talking sometimes. I have to live up to it. And that in itself, I think, is an important part of what we do. Inspiration, the energy that I get in sustaining a work, comes from the work itself. If one doesn't feel that they're in the mood, something isn't quite clicking. It's the distractions of life, it's everything else around us. And just focus, force yourself to work for at least 15, 20 minutes 
And in that moment, you'll begin to be engaged, inspired, just by what begins to happen, and then you're hooked, and time is past.